his will. The one who is willing to forsake brother, land, house, mother, father, and all, and do his will, he's willing to release it. So let the wicked work, but he's working for who? He's working for the righteous who are willing to do the will of God. Or willing to take on the purpose of God. Or willing to say, Lord, whatever it is that you have for my life, I will do it. It's, it's not my ideas anymore. It's not my own desires anymore. I want to please you. I want to do what you're asking me to do. In this time and in the season that we're living in, in, as I said, economic lack for some, I believe we're going to experience God's prosperity in it. And if we have been challenged, don't fear, don't, don't lose heart because guess what? I, I believe if our hearts right with God in terms of what we want to do, because whatever God wants to give to us in this time, because it's been stored up, it's not, it's not what should I say, uh, removed from the earth, it's not taken away from the earth, the prosperity that is in the world. It is still here. The diamond is still here. The gold is still here. The oil is still here. Money is still here. It's just in the wrong hands. God is going to shift it, turn it around, and give it to the one who's willing to do His will. The one who's willing to preach the gospel. And for, for us at this time, as we begin to preach the gospel, you'll find out when you get occupied with the will of God, you're not interested in what you acquire as a wealth. Houses will come, cars will come, money will come. But guess what? Because you know, your focus is not houses, cars, and money, and all the, the things that, that are material, and your focus is to do the will of God, it will come and pass through your hands. The Bible says in James again, sorry, skipping back and forth. But in James, it talks about there, there's something that we have to do. This There has to be an establishing of our house. The reason why we have not seen that wealth transfer is maybe because our hearts haven't been all right. And God always examines our hearts. And He talks about just like the, the one who is sowing and He's waiting patiently. He says, wait patiently. Verse 8, He says, You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. And the establish, uh, establishing of our heart means God is checking our hearts and checking our attitudes and checking our motives to see what kind of motivation we have. Is it a selfish motivation or is it one that is selfless? Because he's not willing to pour into us and give to us if he knows that we're going to hoard it, if he knows that we're going to keep it back. And see, in this world, you see people who have been prosperous, you see people who have been stinking rich and not knowing what to do with it. And the truth is, as you look at it, it's corrupt. It's corrupted. And they've robbed God in many ways. The spirit of greed is entered. Now, you, you'll have the spirit of greed, you'll have the spirit of jealousy and envy, and you'll have the spirit of idolatry when your focus is turned away from God's purposes for your life. And the Bible is clear, there's a time for everything. There's a season for everything. And God is expecting us to fit into His time and His season. The Bible says He makes things beautiful in His time. Not we. He does. So guess what? If we wait and see something turn around, let's give it to God and let's see Him do it. All that we have to do is a shifting and a changing. And so if, if, it, is, if it is money, then the money must have a mission. If it is prosperity, the prosperity must have a purpose. And so the, the safest is for us to be in the center of God's will, doing what God has asked us to do. And I don't believe God is going to release one cent to us unless we have it connected to the end time harvest of souls. And if there's any time and ever a time that we are needed to bring in souls, it is now. It is the challenge is now. And whatever it takes, if God says, right, move, go to another part of the world to do this. If God is saying, go preach in another city. If God is saying, go out, reach out into a school, reach out into a college. If God is calling us to reach out into the marketplace, then we have to do it. And God will make the provision for that. Because see, all that God is looking for is to see our heart in this. And the test is to see if we're willing to give away what God is giving to us. And the best way to give it away is when we're doing His work and reaching out and looking for places. Now, if we can't go, send the money where you can. If it's not just money, it's prayer. Begin to take time for prayer. Because in as much God is sending finances, God is also, it's a season of His power being unleashed upon us.
us. It's a season of His anointing that is poured out upon us. And the same measure that when He's pouring out His anointing upon us, He wants to see what it is that we're going to do. Because in this time that God is releasing His power, what took people many years to accomplish, God is going to accomplish in a shorter space of time. That when you go into a city where there's been struggle before, to be able to touch the lives of people is not going to be a struggle anymore. Where it was difficult to be able to share with them about Jesus and what Jesus can do, it's not going to be like that if we're willing to be faithful, if we're linked to what God wants in our life, if the purposes of God are really the purposes of God in our life, then guess what? God will release His anointing upon us to go and accomplish it. That where you have to spend hours sitting and talking to somebody to, to convince them that this is the truth, now it will just happen like that. And probably, even before you reach there, the work is already done. The Bible speaks about and the plowman shall overtake the reaper. Mm -hmm. So your decision to say, Lord, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do, God will already send the provisions even before you know it. The harvest will already be ready. And as you start and decide, Lord, I'm going to pray for that brother or that sister. Or I'm going to pray for this city. Or I'm going to pray for that country and for this nation and for this people. I'm going to pray that, Lord, their hearts will change. Guess what? Even before you realize it, maybe the Lord is speaking to you to go there. When you arrive there, they'll be waiting for you to share with you. They'll be waiting for God to... To, uh, waiting for you to come so that they can tell you, we want to give our hearts to Jesus. What can we do? What must we do? And your work for where you thought you were trying to prepare yourself, how am I going to share with them about Jesus? How am I going to tell them about the Lord is already prepared? Because God is going to... This is the time that we're living. This is the season I believe we're living in. That God is doing the shifting and the shaking. Haggai says, the gold is mine, the silver is mine. What's the big deal? Mm -hmm. And like that part says, and the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former house. Now the former house, the, the people were crying and saying, we saw the previous temple. This is nothing. The Bible says they cried because it's, they saw this temple being rebuilt and it says it's not like the temple that Solomon built. And God is saying, guess what? It doesn't matter. Because what I'm going to do in the last days, in the end time, is going to be far greater than ever was before. In terms of seeing people prosper. And the truth is, in this age, you, you now you want to reach out to the world and go tell them, you know, Jesus loves you with your poor self and your poverty mentality. They're going to have a laugh at you because they need an answer to their poverty-stricken situation. They're going to need an answer to their economic crisis. They're going to need an answer to their situation. And you're coming to tell them about Jesus can save and Jesus can heal and Jesus can change and you look a mess yourself. You see? The, the, the mentality has got to change. There has been that season where if you get onto the mission field or you go to preach, you have to be the poorest. You have to drive the worst car. You have to be struggling. I remember a preacher, an evangelist who would come and he would preach the gospel and then share about how he had to give up his, the money for his baby's milk to go preach the gospel. I don't think if you do that now, they're going to take you lightly. They're, they're going to look up and say, and you want me to to take that? I'm sorry. We have, you have. we have a whole lot more than that. See, it's that time. And I mean, just think about this. Even even the 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 the, the, the youth that is rising up, you better have some answers for them today. Am I right? Mm -hmm. You better you better have a good answer for God, being able to show them and, and, and see them do well, than just telling them, Oh, Jesus saves and Jesus loves you and he's gonna make it all right. You better have something good. You, you better have something to back what you're saying. And I believe God, as He releases people, He's going to send them. And He's not going to send them poor. He's going to send them having, knowing that God is in control. And see, the, for us, again, it's, it's, it's a case where God is judging our hearts. And he, say, he says, establish your hearts. Get your heart right. If your heart is right, you will see things come your way. You will see God do things. And so as you go out, you wouldn't worry about all the th about that you're not going to have because God will take care of you. Because when He sends you, He's going to send us fully ammunition. We have to get our purposes right with God. We have to get our heart right in this time, in this season, and see God begin to work and see God. I mean, 